Hello, uh, my name is Nick Blake. I'm going to talk to you today about management of distribution and logistics management. The key concept that we're going to talk about here is understanding whether the internet is the future of distribution. The internet is something that, this is not news, uh, this is a technological development that's been with us for a while, but the impacts of the internet on business are still being felt. Internet is developing as a technology becoming involved in more parts of our business. So specifically what we're going to talk about today is understanding the major principles of supply chain management and how to optimize, optimize an organization's product placement. You should be able to assess the impact of different channels of distribution on an organization's overall market success. More than ever, distribution, supply chain management, logistics, there are key differentiators for companies. Okay, some definitions first. What distribution and logistics is really all about is having the correct product in the right place, on time, and in good condition. If we fail to meet any of these conditions, we've essentially failed in the challenge of distribution and logistics. What you have here in just these four areas, a lot of physical distribution, a lot of technology, organization, people management, global networks, there is a huge amount in this area. Switching now to distribution strategy, something that traditionally is right at the forefront of what a marketeer does. There are three different ways that we can approach distribution strategy. The first method is what we call a selective distribution strategy. Here we go for carefully chosen specialist distributors. Usually there's a small number of these organizations. Very often they're small or medium sized enterprises. These companies are very, very close to their customer needs. They're offering their customers a lot more than just a pure sales experience. The second strategy that we may take is an intensive strategy. We'll very often find this for fast-moving consumer goods. Mass distribution. We want to have our product in the most number of places possible to be able to meet customer needs. The way that this is done is quite different from the selective strategy. The final option that we might have is a more exclusive strategy. Very often you'll find this in the area of franchising, uh, you may find it in high-end products where we need to look at the geographical area, geographical concentration of the distribution channels to make sure that we don't have excess competition between those channels. This slide is quite a technical slide. What it's looking at is over pretty much the history of the internet as far as most of us know it, the way that different activities have changed in their importance on the internet. The quote is talking about the web is dead, but long live the internet. What this really means is that we are still using the web, but we are doing an awful lot more on the internet. The internet is becoming very, very important to us in our personal lives and also in our business lives. This chart is going to continue to change. Internet usage is still exploding. We are still discovering new ways to use the internet, new online experiences, social media, social marketing, lots of, lots of things that we can get involved in as marketeers. The internet has been an enabler. There are a number of businesses around that we're all familiar with. Two examples I've given here, EasyJet, Amazon, they could not run their business without the internet. They are basically web businesses. Prior to widespread adoption of the internet, these business models could not have worked. Okay? These companies, from small beginnings, have become pretty much the biggest airline in Europe, EasyJet, Amazon, one of the biggest retailers of books, to start with, now one of the biggest online retailers, full stop, and one of the biggest internet players. 
This was not the situation 20 years ago. Big change with the internet as an enabler. The internet is also a change agent. And a change agent very specifically from a marketing perspective here. The internet is global. The internet is reaching parts of the world that other technologies never reached. It's available 24-7. It's never closed. Many businesses can use the internet as a supplement to existing channels. The existing distribution channels, they still exist, they still have a role. This is another way of serving customer needs. One major advantage of the internet is it is essentially a two-way channel. There is a communication element that's very direct that we may not have with other distribution channels. For all the businesses, the internet is pure competitive advantage. If you're not doing digital strategies, internet-based businesses, you may not be able to survive in today's world. And the final item here, specifically from a distribution perspective, is a concept we talk about called disintermediation. This means the ability to remove intermediaries from distribution channels. This enables us to have a much more direct connection with our customers and can also help reduce cost. As well as the internet being global, supply chains are increasingly global. The example I give you on this slide is very typical of what we now see in the high-tech world. We can make an order today in the UK over the internet for a product that actually doesn't yet exist. That product is going to be perhaps manufactured in China tonight, shipped tomorrow night, arriving in Europe the day after, and then delivered to you a day or two later, which is going to mean three or four business days from the time that you ordered it. And remember, this product doesn't exist yet. This couldn't have been done 20 years ago. The combination of the internet being available and global supply chains has made a dramatic difference to business, dramatic difference to marketing. So the internet and global supply chains coming together, they're two significant developments in the way that we do business today. There's been dramatic change within the last few years. That change is going to continue. There are aspects of globalization and technology to this. There are also risks. The disintermediation that I spoke about, that can immediately lead to channel conflict. That's something that your intermediaries may not be very happy about. Global supply chains can be vulnerable to disruption. We've seen that recently. 9-11 and the volcanic ash incident both had a significant negative impact on a number of businesses. And finally, Globalization, as an idea, as a concept, as a development, can be challenged. Not everybody is comfortable with that. Thank you.